So I, I did watch, I watched Halloween films. I watched uh, Stranger Things, the second season. And, and, you know, it was a slow burn up till about the last three episodes. And then it really kicked in and it was great. Absolutely loved it. Um, I watched one called The Bad Batch. And I was very unimpressed. Uh, another yeah. post-apocalyptic film with no real moral tale to it. Uh, the only draw it really had was uh, a brief role by Keanu Reeves. And otherwise, it was just, a, it, it ran two hours. And it was like, well, and, and, and the, the ending of it was so transparent in its symbolism that it made me want to cry. You go, yeah, I see what you're getting at. I saw that a long time ago. <laughs> Thanks for wasting two hours of my life. Um, and what we harked about in episode one about, you know, the, inver you know, the remakes, the sequels. I watched Cult of Chucky. And again, it's not really the story. If, you know, Chucky is a, almost in a peripheral role. It's more about the mental torment that um, a woman's going through from the previous film. Um, so not exactly, you know, a great film. Uh, the violence wasn't what I thought it would be. And it was, you know, probably five out of 10 is what I would give it. Um, yeah, I watched a few. I watched, I watched uh, Halloween Night, also known as hack o -Lantern. And you can, uh, it, it, it's atrocious, but funny. It's everything 80s quiche that you could actually want, you know, um, down to the bad hairdos, the bad acting, um, the ridiculous killings. It was actually kind of refreshing. Um, <laughs> well, you know how it is when you get a little bit nostalgic. I watched a film called uh, The Man from Hong Kong recently which is just a wonderful um, martial arts film that few people have ever heard of. And it's got a decent running time and uh, the martial arts are, well, typical of the day. And uh, it was really fantastic, you know? So, and this was kind of what Hack-A-Lantern did for me was kind of reminded me of the days when you know, you'd go to the video store and you'd see a shitty looking film, you know, and you'd rent it and take it home and go, oh, that wasn't too bad. Well, you eat your popcorn with your buddies and drink some beers. You know, it was, it was fine, you know, terrible, but fine. Well, sometimes, sometimes terrible is good. Yeah, well, yeah, Mystery Science Theater 3000 would have no career if, uh, if it wasn't that way, you know. So, you know, along with all, I was looking forward to three things this year. Actually, call it four. The first one was Twin Peaks. I was really looking forward to Twin Peaks. And every week I thought, okay, well, it's setting something up. It's going to get better. It's setting something up. It's going to get better. And in the end, what I thought was it was. David Lynch being totally self-indulgent, totally self-indulgent. Um, there's one whole episode that's almost like a student film, you know, very much along his, you know, the lines of his early films, just bizarre imagery combined with, you know, the, the strange noises that he's known for um, and, and just edited together in a very bizarre fashion. And in the end, you're left with a bigger cliffhanger than you were in the original Twin Peaks. So I thought, okay, well, fine. Second thing I was looking forward to was Mystery Science Theater 3000, The Return. And that was phenomenal. Um, you know, uh, it went through the biggest Indiegogo campaign ever, the most successful. And it didn't disappoint. You know, you've got new people that are the voices of the robots, a new guy. Um on the satellite of love while well, not really on, well, I guess not really on the satellite of love, but trapped on the moon. Um, and the films are atrocious and 
you know, the riffing is as good as ever. So for me, that was the win because the next thing that I was looking forward to was Star Trek Discovery. And uh, yeah, I don't know what you think, but. Uh, I, I truly, I haven't watched it except uh, the first that was it. Uh, um, I've uh, I watched uh, um, actually Halloween. Didn't watch much. I watched this one picture called the Kaladin. I don't know if I'm if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It was a, it was an Asian film um, with samurais and this woman rises rises from the dead to haunt her husband and uh, take her revenge. Um, it was actually, yeah, it was uh, pretty stylized, but it was like stylized in like kabuki and stuff like this. And it was pretty cool. Um, Horrific. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, there was some pretty, well, brutal, well, sword deaths in it. There was, uh, it was uh, the time of the ninjas. And it was pretty, uh, it was interesting. There were some, some interesting moments, an interesting use of color and uh, some white makeup. And it was very similar to, um, I think it was, uh, what was that, that, that picture with the videotape? Remember they play the videotape? Oh, the ring? And, and yeah, the ring. It was similar to the kind of creature in the ring. Uh, the long hair, the white face. And it seems to be a... a Sort of an Asian convention, almost. Thing for the people. There was some. There was a really. There was a scene. Uh, he puts the body of of his slain wife, and the, and uh, and a door, and the door sinks to the bottom of the lake, and now all of a sudden it comes back up again, and she sits up. It's really cool. Really interesting way of doing things. That's always nice to see something that uh, the cinematographer has given some thought to, you know. Uh, this, I, I don't remember. I think you can look it up on the uh, um, Internet Movie Database. It's spelled K-W-A-D-I-A-N, Kawadin or something. Hmm. I'll check it out. So, uh, Is it on Netflix or? Uh, it's on TCN. Oh, TCM, okay. TCM runs stuff. Uh, uh, have you seen the Orville? The Orville? I love the Orville. Yeah, That's, I only saw it, the first episode. Oh, man, it's, it's, it's done some stuff that would have made, uh, you know, real, really good next generation episodes. And mm -hmm. somebody, on the, and that, that was the fourth one that I was looking forward to when I found out about the Orville. The initial episode had a lot of over-the-top humor, and that's kind of settled down now. There's still the odd reference, you know, stop being a dick sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know. But some of the episodes would have really fit in well with The Next Generation, and somebody knows their Star Trek because the musical cues, the angles of the, 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 the ship shots, um, the camera setups were very Next Generation. And... Uh, I, I love it far more than I love Star Trek Discovery, let me tell you. Uh, it's actually because uh, I get, think his name is Brian Braga or something. The next gen producer is one of the producers. Oh, it. Yeah, Brennan Braga. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. And Andre Boronis, too, mm -hmm. is another Trek person. But, uh, I, I wasn't sure whether they continued on with the series or they just did the pilot. So. No, no, they're they're on there, and uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's you know I'm I'm very impressed with it every week. You know, they, you do get a few laughs, but you know they, they they they've gone places where even Star Trek hasn't gone in terms of uh, depicting sexuality and uh, equality, and you know, how sometimes your best intentions as a human being may not be, you know, there's a reason why they need a prime directive in, in, you know, their, their federation. Um, but discovery, you know, if it was just another series and it was on space or sci-fi 
and it was called uh, the Star Explorers. I doubt anybody would watch it. It's not that interesting. The Star Lost. Yeah, the Star Lost. The star Lost. Yeah, <laughs> based upon the works of Cord Winter Bird. Yeah. <laughs> then you could have that Walter Koenig come back on as a continuation, have him play his, his guest starring role. And, uh, yeah, no, I think the Star Lost is one of those ones best not remade. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, yes. stuck on this ship, and the best you can come up with is a fucking crossbow. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was CTV that did that, didn't it? Oh, I yeah. think so. Yeah, it was uh, CTV. not. Yeah, CTV Toronto, I think. Yeah. My God, it was poor. Fuck. Yeah, and I was thinking too. If it was CBC, it could be they could use the old Forest Rangers set. Hmm. I could even have some guest appearances by Chup. Yeah. Show two rivers. Chup, I show you how. I show you how to wipe ass with pine cone, Chup. Yes, and, and uh, Gordon Pinsett wearing the red surge. Yeah, when that guy who used to be in seeing things. Fuck. Yeah. Any American listening to this wouldn't know what the fuck we're talking about. Um, well, I think seeing things, so they were, that was, who was that? That was a Louis Del Grande. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it actually wasn't a bad thing. Um, that would be yeah. something, you know, that probably CBC could probably revisit. Yeah. That was, that was nice. There was his acting <laughs> range. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no one could do it like him. Classic. Yes. And, and also, it's very bad to say this, but with Canadian television, with um, made Crescent do a afternoon talk show. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, I remember I, I grew up in an age where Elwood Glover was on. Hey, lunch date. No, I used to like uh, Lenihan. You know, and SCTV took the piss out of him for years. But I mean, but it was true. You know, people would say to him, how do you know that? I mean, his research team was top notch. Mm -hmm. you know, I understand that you like to hang from a bar upside down every morning. You know, how the hell do you know that? You know? Just, um, I, I, just, I just thought of was it the Robert Carradine? <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, except you have to be in what is it, Thailand or something in a closet? Yeah, so yeah hung himself having a wank. Yeah. I wrote a whole, I wrote a whole essay on that. So one of the things, you know, that you look at all these accusations coming up now about sexual groping and, you know, basically casting coaches, that kind of thing, you know, and that whole series being gone down the tubes and stuff, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, uh, as much as, you know, I mean, well, first of all, fuck, that casting coach has been around since there was film yeah you know and i know uh there's a producer a horror producer of indie films out there and his line um if we'd like if you'd like to be in my film um you know i'll i i, I you know you can be in my film if you let me put my fat cock up your ass and yet the funny thing is there's always women in his films so you know, this is, to the general public, this is some kind of, like, secret or something. You know, oh, I didn't know that. You know, bullshit. Yeah. You know, that's and so as much as it's got to stop, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's you know, as a practice, this, this, it's loathable. This fellow, uh, this fellow, uh, it's, it's been there since, it's been there since the tens when, in Hollywood, and, uh, it's not something to be proud of. It's been institutionalized. Uh, that it becomes part of part of the industry. Mm -hmm. I think in some cases. And uh, uh, this, uh, I'm not I'm not going to use his name because uh, it, it's nothing new. Uh, uh, there was a fellow. I'm sure you know because you've seen some of his films. Uh, uh, Harry Cohen. Uh, mm -hmm. 
who, uh, yeah, uh, he was known for doing that. Uh, he was just a, uh, like he would attend interviews naked, you know, and he was just uh, well, apparently a monster. Hmm. And, uh, just a bad person, somebody said. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, they're out made, there. Made little pictures like um, From Here to Eternity. Oh. <laughs> little ones like that. Uh, and uh, no, it's been institutionalized. It's not, uh, the studios have way, way, way too much power that uh, when you could go, the studio would go to a murder scene and clean things up and then allow the police in. Uh, monstrous, some of these things that they did and they covered up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And now, well, yeah. Does Fatty Arbuckle um, drink Coke? Actually, have you read the transcripts of that? There's three trials, and he's acquitted each time. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was acquitted each time, and um, it's like Flynn. It was in like Flynn comments. And the stigma never left him, and he couldn't get work. Um, well, I wouldn't think that a comedian who was, you know, again, public perception is everything. Well, um, this is, you know, but yet some people, it runs off like water, and you know, on, on some of these guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you think back a few years, Raw Blow, you know, making home movies with underage girls, you'd think, well, that might have hurt his career. Yeah. You know, but no. Um, sometimes the public forgets. Um, you know, Lyle Atwell, speaking of horror actors, mm -hmm. well, his nickname was Pinky. And... Uh, he was brought up on charge of, I don't know, I, I guess, sodomy, I guess, was one of them. Uh, um, apparently, he had a lot of wild parties. And uh, he would never, ever divulge who was at his parties. He took the rap, and it cost him his career. Huh. And he said, I will never, ever tell who was there, but people enjoyed themselves. And it was a big secret. Mm -hmm. You know, you got invited to these things. And uh, I'll leave you to your imagination that it was called Pinky. But uh, um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a secret. No, no. You know, I, a colleague of mine uh, was at a party one time in LA uh, where Mr. Weinstein was. And uh, it was in the home of a pretty powerful director. And Weinstein basically told the director to drop down and suck his cock. And the guy did. You know, you go, well, how much power do you wield? You know, mm -hmm. how much are you willing to do? You know, because it's, it's, and it's not surprising in a way. You know, I mean, I, I've gotten nude photos in my fucking email. I'll do anything to be cast in a film. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, there's something wrong, nice. you know, and I, and I just, I don't, I don't understand it. You know, it's, I think it goes back to um, the Hollywood dream and the elusive dream of, I will be discovered. And for years, people would come out, the beauty contest winners, the handsome man, the woman, they would come out and they would try to make their way in pictures and uh, film, not pictures. <laughs> and uh, I remember reading a, a trade journal, uh, it was a reprint, and it said basically to people, don't come out, <laughs> there's too many of you. This was in the 20s. Mm -hmm. you know, because you would come back and you would be broken hearted. Sometimes you would have had a back alley abortion or you've been used in some way. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was the lure, and I think for some it still is. Yeah, well, you know, you know, a large portion of, you know, as we move into a, sort of a new sort of film world where, you know, you've got the studios, but the indies are becoming more popular, indie, pro-indie. Um, 
then you see a lot of people who desperately want to make it to the point of self delusion um, where it's almost where it's almost like American Idol you know and you, and you look at some of the stuff that people send you and it's literally like watching William Hung on American Idol you know but at a certain point you can't look anymore you know and and I find it in the scripts that I get sent you know and I, I find it in uh and me, I mean, who am I? I'm really nobody, you know. Um, so when you open up, and when you open up an attachment, and there's a nude photo, hmm? no, but and, you know, when you open up an attachment, and there's a nude photo, you know, I'll do anything, you know. I live in Kansas, and I would, you know, blah blah blah. And here's my phone number, you know. And you go, oh my God, you know what? A, I don't know. I don't know. It just, um, you know, whether or not if I was, you know, a younger man, it would be any more appealing. I doubt it. No, um, but, you know, because I mean, it, in, in a way, it almost denotes um, harsh personal insecurity. And, but that drive without, it reminds me of half wits on SCTV. Do you remember that? Yeah. And they got that character. Oh, there's several things I'd like to accomplish, Alex. One would be like to be a, 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 a Olympic figure skater or perhaps an astronaut. And the guy, you know, has an IQ of about six, you know, and that's kind of what it reminds me of in a lot of ways, you know, um, it's for a generation that thinks that they're entitled to whatever yeah. they want. You can you can blame outlets for that too. You can blame outlets like in television programs for that. Uh, um, I know speaking musically, Roger Daltrey says he blames YouTube for uh, the decline of music. Mm -hmm. You know, because people think you don't have to tour, you know, you just go in there and you hear the stories of the YouTube stars. Hell, Justin Bieber was that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's, basically it's true. Who was that girl who had that hit with that song, something about Fridays? And she was a YouTube sensation and got a little recording contract and probably made a hell of a lot of money. For what, really? You know, one little song, you know. When you have two guys that are sitting somewhere in one of the Nordic countries who are responsible for writing 85% of today's pop tunes based on a formula. You know, you've got screenplays that are based on formula. You've got songs that are based on formula, you know, and, and Apple themselves, you know, many, many execs have said, you know, and, and bands that Apple literally ruined musical careers. When a band has to go out and tour just to have the money to survive as a band, um, they shouldn't have to do that, but they're making pennies, yeah. pennies on every album that they're selling. You know, and if you think it's easy, you know, film. Um, and not a lot of people know this. You know, they think, well, gee, you know, it cost me three forty nine or three ninety nine to rent this movie, and five ninety nine to download it. Well, out of that five ninety nine, the filmmaker by the time the distributor takes his cash and everything else, you're not making a hell of a lot of money. And most of the streaming services pay you by the hour. By the hour. Now, if you're Adam Sandler and somehow you're lucky enough that you've, you've, you've hit the 500 million hour mark. And even if it's as little as 16 cents an hour, that's a lot of money. So in order for the filmmaker, the independent filmmaker, to make his money back, um, I mean, you would literally have to have hundreds of thousands of hours. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, on streaming. And then, of course, you've got your Blu-rays, your DVDs, your merchandising sales, whatever you want to do. 
but you have to rely on it. You know, it's almost to the point where you say, well, if you're going to rent this movie, when you're done watching it, just press play again. And when it's done, press play again. And when it's done, press play again. So, you know, the filmmaker can make a little bit of money, you know, it's, and anybody who has this dream that they're going to get fucking rich by making a, an independent film and getting it out there, you know, that's not the case, you know, um, you know, I mean, certainly there are those that, uh, you know, with some studio backing money, you know, we'll get it released in theatrical and whatever else. Yes. You know, so there's still a system there, but the, but the studios are taking less and less of a chance continuously. That, that I, that I think that last remark you said, I think is the, is the whole thing. Um, they don't take the chance. It's, it's gone past the fact that studios taking unproven talent or talent that they have nurtured and giving, given a large budget and have them make pictures. And it's the same as music. Nobody wants to take the risk anymore, but they all want the payout at the end. Mm -hmm. They're all looking for the next big one. And uh, so they don't want to. And that's why I know like we're finding you get everybody wants to help you, but everybody wants money. I will master your album for 500 bucks. You know, I will do a poster for you. Oh, really? You will? Okay, well, it'll be a thousand bucks. You know, this sort of thing. And uh, everybody wants a little piece of you, but you also want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in the film industry now, um, with HGB, it, 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 never work for nothing, people. Never work for nothing because you set a dangerous precedent. Um, everybody should be paid for what they're doing. If you can't pay somebody, and if it's a short film and it's an experimental film or whatever, but if you want to do a web series or anything like that, pay your people. Because there comes a point where people begin to expect that they don't have to pay for things. And you're doing a disservice to people who've put their dues in. Um, and people might say, who are you to say that? Well, I'm, you know, who am I? I'm the fucking money man. I'm the one who puts the funding together. I'm not the one standing out there. Well, actually I am. Well, you know, fake blood freezes and you're trying to pump it through an open wound in the neck and all that sort of thing. Um, I like to get involved, but I mean, a producer is a money man. You know, I put the money together to shoot. And, uh, but no, you know, pay your people. Even if it's a pittance, pay them. You know, make people expect to get paid because they should. And if you can't budget yeah. that, if you cannot budget it, then don't fucking do it. You know, have the fucking integrity to, you know, sure, you're following your dream, but I mean, don't expect professional people or semi-professional people even to work for nothing. Um, no, I don't think that's, that's fair. Um, you know, there are some things and everything, but uh, no, you should get, you should get some money. Even if it's pin money, you know, mm -hmm. to, for a little bit anyway, and say you know, more to come, so to speak. So, do you think he's actually speaking of that? Do you think he's actually going to come here? Yeah. I don't know. I waiting for my phone. You know, I might even post this. Two guys talking. You know, I don't give a shit. And one cat. One cat. Well, I don't, what, what I'll say is, uh, you know, why not? Just fuck, you know, we were supposed to have a guest. Guest didn't show up, so we just started talking and saw where it went. Oh, come on, you're married. You can't be making those sexy faces. But, uh, you know, and, and I don't know, I can't speak to the music industry, but, you know, it's the same way. Um, you know, I mean, the, the artist is making very little money. Apple's making all the freaking money. You don't make you don't make money on Twitter either. It's you make money on merge. Hmm. Wow. You know, you, and that the one actual you know, well the the actual with the exception of bands like 
the Rolling Stones. You know, but even that, when they mount their recent tour, you still have to pay staging, you still have to pay lots of people to do what they do. Uh, but they also sell a hell of a lot of merch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, some wonderful stuff, you know, and it does cost. Uh, I was going to order a Rolling Stones Paris t-shirt uh, from their last tour. It was the last concert. And it would cost me, including shipping, uh, $52 American for this. Well, that's not design. bad. It probably would have cost you 40 or 50 at the concert. Yeah. Uh, probably about in the book. 40. Um, the uh, hoodie for the same concert is about 110. <laughs> so, That's 110 a lot of American. money. Well, you look at the Eagles, you know. They don't let anybody sell their tickets but their own website. Yeah. You know, which but, is smart. You know, I mean, and until you know. And far between. Well, yeah. Few and far between. These are the make the dough. And, uh, uh, but once you, you never know how much they make because you know until everybody's paid out and then this is what we've got left. So, yeah, it's a big difference between gross and net. Yeah. yeah. What's that sound? You got uh, no, I, is that the stamp Elgate people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the ones who are getting out there early for the big classic. Um, but no, it's, um, it, you know, tours do cost a lot of money. Um, but then again, you know, I mean, if you're playing, if you're big enough to play large venues, then you, you should be fine. You know, I look at people who play the Grey Eagle here, like Boz Skaggs I went and saw the other night. And I think, well, I wonder how much Boz made for his evening, you know. And personally, he probably made, you know, after you pay out the band members and whatever else, he probably made himself five grand. Just going by the ratio of ticket sales per venue rental and um and whether or not the venue rental is is actually paying for the advertising if they're doing their actual tickets or is it going through Ticketmaster? is it going through brown bag you know you know it's so yeah but at the end of the night he probably made himself five thousand dollars so by the time the tax man takes care of that you know it's a living mm -hmm. you know that's why you don't see many 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 bands doing really super large tours like the rolling stones are i think only did 10 cities in europe and then they stop for a while and then they go and do what they do and then they'll go out on another leg like the australian leg or the, uh, pacific leg or something uh, it takes a while because it takes a while out of you physically too well, most of the people who com command those kind of audiences aren't young spring chickens anymore. You know, that's why we, they, what, they offered Led Zeppelin some outrageous sum of money to do a world tour. And uh, Robert turned it down. I, you know, I can think of a number of reasons. First of all, well, they're not young men. Jimmy yeah. Page is approaching 80. Roger Daltrey said that. He said, he said, I don't think we can tour anymore because this will kill me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, another Rolling Stones tour. I mean, how many people want to watch a 76-year-old man dance around a, a stage with no right. shirt on? You know, I would like to see the Rolling Stones, but I don't, you know, not, right. I don't necessarily want to see a strutting Mick with no shirt at this age. You know, it's, it's just something, you know... Uh, It'd be like saying, yeah, the I want to see Randy are, Bachman topless. <laughs> the, concerts are in, uh, the concerts are on YouTube, and I don't think he does that. He doesn't do that anymore. Oh, good. Um, it's, uh, it's quite, the shows I've watched, like, they still have it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, somewhere, somehow it comes. You know, just, you know, mm -hmm. it Did you know that uh, um, they have to spend a couple months in rehearsal because Keith has to learn? the songs again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he literally has mm -hmm. to and how many times has he played jumping jack flash well, but you have to learn a, the freaking chords again and how to play a, it there's a story about that saying that uh, do you remember a few years ago when it was 
94 or something when he fell out of the tree. Tree, yep. Yeah, he was in a tree and he fell out of it. And he had to have a, an operation for pressure on his brain. Um, there's some rumors saying that his guitar playing and that's a result of this is a latent return to the after effects of this from, from his injury. And he's having problems. Well, that, that and, uh, could probably be if he had a brain edema, but again, you have to say that the fucking massive amounts of drugs he's embalmed with probably have a little something to do with that. I mean, look at Ozzy. Ozzy can't, he, Ozzy can't remember the lyrics to, to Iron Man, for God's sakes. He's got to have a telestrator. You know, I mean, that's, he didn't fall out of a tree. <laughs> Um, Keith, yeah, because you can see the difference in his guitar playing in, in some of the shows, and uh, uh, probably what his lifestyle has something to do with it. Uh, but it's also age too; people age differently. And, oh yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm I'm very surprised that a lot of these guitar players don't have arthritis in their hands. You know, and I know uh, you know Neil Peart drumming for Rush, he's got problems, and that's one of the reasons they're no longer uh, touring. But, uh, you know, you'd think there'd be more of it, you know? Because a lot of these you guys are approaching 80 years old. You can't do the three-hour the three hour rock and roll show um, very much anymore. If you can, you can do, actually, the Rolling Stones did it on, their stuff is usually about two hours, 45 two hours and a half and uh but they do one like havana for instance and then they would that would be it you know one shot so mm -hmm. um all these all this concert footage i've seen from europe with the mom no filter tour it's about two and a half hours 245 the shows and which is pretty good and mind you they build in stops to like there's moments when people leave the stage and a little solo act and some solo stuff and different things going on. So mm -hmm. it's not yeah. much, much, much like an Alice Cooper history. show with the dancers and get Alice off the stage for a while, yeah. you know, let Vince have a drink of water and a little rest and, you know, do it that way. And, uh, or, or just be a cigarette behind the app, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, no, it's it's hard. It's hard to do that. And, uh, mm -hmm. I oh, think yeah. the Rolling Stones do a wonderful job. I go, I go and see them. Um, simply because it's a lot of people don't go to see, I'm going to listen to some new songs. They're going to go, I'm going to go and see the Rolling Stones, the whole atmosphere of it. Hmm. Are you going to go see Rod Stewart? Actually, I talked to Rose about that. And I, th I think the answer is no. <laughs> well, I did. the reason I'm kind of compelled to is because he's playing the hits. You know, oh, go back to the bloody 60s. Go to the 60s and the 70s and play, you know, uh, Country Comfort, you know, stuff like that. You know, if, if, if he does that, fine. You know, uh, I, you know, I don't need to hear the killing of Georgie live, you know, or do you think yeah, I'm sexy? Yeah. That'll happen, you know. And was it Hot Legs? Yeah. Hot Legs. Oh, Hot Legs was a good song in its day. But yeah, I love I've, you. I've never you seen, know. I've never seen Rod. So, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just like um, fuck. <laughs> just, just, really, just don't don't isolate that as a voice clip, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Why I have here's Rod Steiger beside me, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so at any given point, we could say, "We'll be right back after this important announcement." Yes, and then That's it's time cool. to insert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, those words are so foreign to me these days. I... I'm not saying a thing. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> I've been celibate more than a Catholic priest. <laughs> oh, by the way, do you want, do you want, to, want to hear a politically incorrect joke? I can always edit this out. 
Sure. What's the difference between a Catholic priest and acne? I, I don't know. Well, acne usually waits till you're 14 years old before it comes in your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. I might have to edit that one out. Yeah. But then again, I don't think many Catholics will be watching anyway. No, I guess I should like, say that. Yeah, do the, I should probably be heading soon because I have to get to sleep. So. All right. Well, we'll, we'll end on another note then. If I've offended the Catholics, then I might as well, you know, uh, continue. <laughs> Jesus Christ okay. walks into a motel to the registration desk. He drops three nails on the counter and he says, could you put me up for the evening? I'm, I'm not even going there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well, we'll have to reschedule yeah. this and uh, okay. I may edit this down and throw it up on the Sinning site just to get it out there. Why sure. not? All right, um, well, you have a good evening and uh, okay. we'll reschedule. Let me know how to let me know how the sound comes out. Oh, I will. Yeah. Well, if yeah, it comes out terrible, you won't see it. If it comes out good, you'll you'll see it. I'll post it on okay. Facebook. Okay. All right, man. All right. Peace. Take care. Bye-bye.